Hey y'all, happy Friday. So we're talking about how God was with Moses because that's what he told Joshua. And he's calling Joshua up to be the next leader of the Israelite nations to bring them into the promise that that um, he made to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob. The whole He brought them out of slavery to go into this promised land. And so he's telling Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. And the name that I am, I am, I am, I am. And Moses told um, told God, let's go to Exodus chapter 4. Um, and Moses answered, but behold, they will not believe me or listen to and obey my voice. For they will say, the Lord has not appeared to you. And the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? He said, a rod. He said, cast it to the ground, and he did so, and it became a serpent, the symbol of royal and divine power worn on the crown of the pharaohs. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord says to Moses, put forth your hand and take it by the tail. And he stretched it out, and he caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. This you shall do, said the Lord, that the elders may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, is, has indeed appeared to you. And the Lord also said to him, put your hand in your bosom. He put his hand in his bosom. We took it out. It was leprous, as white as snow. God said, put your hand back in again. So he put his hand back into his bosom. And when he pulled it out, behold, it was restored as the rest of his flesh. God said, if they will not believe you or heed the voice or the testimony of the first sign, they may believe the voice or the witness of the second sign. But if these also will not if they will not believe these two signs or heed your voice, you shall take some water of denial and pour it upon dry land, and the water which you take out of the river shall become blood on the land. And Moses doesn't even acknowledge that one, right? He says in verse 10, Moses said to the Lord, O Lord, I am not an eloquent or a man of words, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant. For I am slow of speech and have a heavy and awkward tongue. And the Lord says to him, who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the dumb or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now, therefore, go and I will be with your mouth and I will teach you what to say. And he said, oh, my Lord, I pray you send by the hand of some other whom you will send. The anger of the Lord blazed against Moses. He said, Is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know he can speak well, and he is coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be overjoyed. You must speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. He shall speak for you to the people acting as a mouthpiece for you, and you shall be as God to him. So the words that God gives Moses, Moses is going to give Aaron. God tells Moses he can do it. And Moses is just finding reasons why he cannot. But listen to this. If you read through then the discourse between Exodus 4 and then Exodus, you know, 13, 14, when they cross the Red Sea, you will see this transformation of Moses, who did begin by letting Aaron speak and Aaron say all of the things. And actually, Aaron is the one that raised his... Um, raised his arms, stretched his arms out for the plagues to come in. And Aaron Aaron did it. And I was looking for that scripture because I just I just read it. Okay. So look in Exodus 4, 28-29. 28 says Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord with which he had sent him and all the signs with which he had charged him. Moses and Aaron went and gathered together the elders of the Israelites. Aaron spoke all of the words which the Lord had spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And so they go to Pharaoh. 
course, Barry says no, increases their work workload. Um, and I'm going to read that before we finish up today. Do, 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 do. Holy Spirit, I just read it. Okay. Um, in chapter 7, they go back to Pharaoh, and he says, let my people go. Pharaoh says, no. In verse 19, and the Lord said to Moses, say to Aaron, take your rod and stretch out your arm over the waters of Egypt, over the streams, rivers, pools, ponds of water, that they may become blood, and there shall be blood throughout all the land of Egypt in containers both of wood and stone. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded. Aaron lifted up the rod and smote the waters in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and all the waters turned to blood. So God tells Moses, Moses tells Aaron, Aaron speaks the word, and then Aaron does it. Aaron lifted up the rod. But as we progress through the story, the account, I don't like to call it story because it's not a fictional made-up story. It is a historical account. So when you read through the account of this, eventually Moses begins to speak to Pharaoh, and Moses stretches out the rod. And it's a really, really cool growth and transformation from Moses who said, um, who, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? You have to send somebody else. I'm not a man of words. I'm not eloquent. I stutter. And God's like, okay, Aaron can go with you. But you're going to do it, Moses. You are going to get there. I love that he gets Moses to the point where Moses says to Pharaoh, right before the last plague, so the killing of the firstborn, Moses says to Pharaoh, you have spoken right, for you will not see my face again. This man who cowered at the thought of having to go to speak to Pharaoh, God is with him. The I am sent him, and the I am empowered him. This is really cool. I encourage you, you know, today, tomorrow, the weekend, as you have a ch chance, go back and read those accounts from Exodus, like 4 to 14. So it was 10 chapters, and you can see the growth of Moses in his trust on the Father, and how, this again, this man who, who could not, who didn't feel like he could speak, is telling Pharaoh, you will not see my face again. And he's the one. He stretches out his arm. So it's really, really cool. And we will pick up here next week. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.